What's going on guys? Dan here, D Speed Shop. Um, so in the last video we had this thing kind of half casually wired up and uh, and whatnot. So today what I'm going to do, well, what I want to do, is I want to put a set of Fenderwell headers on this thing. Now I don't have them yet, but I'm getting them um, actually late, late tonight. So I got to stay up late. I'm usually like a 9, 10 o'clock bedtime guy. Anyways, in the meantime I'm going to work on some stuff. So I found a set of... Uh, Hood hinges, they actually look not too bad. They're a little rusty, but whatever. I, I uh, blew them off with some brake clean. They're all together. Hopefully they're, they don't look like they'll be all seized. So anyways, I'm gonna fog them all black, just so they look nice. While I'm doing that, while I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna work on a splash pan. So, splash pan, someone has welded some piece to it on both sides, which we're gonna, de-weld them it's got a split right there we're gonna clean that up weld it back together and then on all the sides it's supposed to have a bunch of these kind of little thread holes they've been all beat up i'm just gonna drill them out because i'm just gonna use nut and bolts we're not going for factory appearance here then i'll scuff up in this area paint this black as well because this section here will be on the inside Like that. So everything under the hood will be black. We got the hood done. So I'd like to put the hinges on, splash pan in. Hopefully by then I can start working the headers. I'm definitely gonna have to cut around the wheel tubs, which is fine, no big deal. And if those all fit per uh, perfectly, which I'm hoping they will, put it all back together, then the hood can actually go on. We can start working on latching and all that. I don't think I have a hood latch mechanism. But uh, we'll figure that out. I must have something. Again, most of this car was my 55 Chevy. I put a glass front end on. Now, I don't remember. This is we're going back years if it had all that stuff or not. But if I do, he's pretty good. Then we start putting the grill and all that sort of in. The car's going to go together. Kind of look like a car. I should probably have to start kind of half taking apart when we do body work. But in the meantime, it'll look more and more like a hot rod. So we'll get set up over there and see what we can accomplish on that splash pan real quick. Actually went a lot faster than I thought. So, outside of the repair, oh, up here, yeah. I didn't make it perfect. I mean, at the end of the day, it's on the back side. I actually got to paint outside the lines a little bit. I kind of forgot. I'm just doing this section. It's a little pitted in this area. I don't know how it's going to show up on the old GoPro, but that's where the drain is for the radiator. So, it's probably had some water on it at the back side. Eh. And he's got another quick coat, but now it stinks like paint here. So, we're going to take a quick intermission. We'll be back bolt those on yeah i don't know if we should i probably won't bolt that on actually because i what i'm going to do is put the fe fender wells on and then i'll take the fenders right off kind of do a little marking because i'm gonna have to trim those uh those inners actually i should do a little googling i'm pretty sure a lot of guys just cut them right around there i mean that's if i go across there I can't go into the brakes obviously probably won't be that much butchery i'm pretty sure on this side but Almost just kind of follow a line like that, and then go down, and that's where they're going to have to be, I assume. But, uh, man, I'm going gonna to go look at some pictures of the internet and see what they look like. Well, it's about midnight, and these are the cobbled together exhaust stuff. I ugly walled these tips on. These are the uh, pipes that were on Josh's car when we did Miles of Mayhem. You know that feeling when you go to the bar and you get real drunk and you go home with somebody and then when you wake up in the morning and you know you've made some kind of mistake that you can't reverse? This is similar. All I've got left right now to do immediately is uh, just unbolt Dallas's mint custom exhaust job here and pull it off the motor, throw it in storage. 
and then try to find a way to fucking lift this engine up. These things are loud, very loud, but they're there, they're frozen on the ground and stuff. Um, Josh should I can borrow them for as long as I want, right? So we'll see what happens. Let them thaw out, I'm going to bed, we'll deal with this tomorrow after work. I don't have header bolts, so I gotta buy header bolts. I think I have some uh, gaskets, probably get some collector gaskets. I think I'll be taking them apart, obviously, to get them fit in the car and then put these ridiculous mufflers and tailpipes on and see what it looks like. Should be good. Next day. Man, parts came in like crazy today. I thought we were going to be run out of parts, but I fluked out and Rock Auto just thing lost in the mail for a little bit. Man, those guys are all over it. Sent me another box, got it. Nice tea's mine. Imagine if Rock Auto sent you an iced tea with your order. Man, that would be something right there. Put that in the comments. Anyways, we got brake stuff, master cylinders, we got some steering stuff. I don't even know what I got some brake stuff, and then I got oh, there it is. Oh, did I order drums? Oh, I must order drums. They're heavy. Sweet. Uh, what did I order here? Usually I get El Cheapo stuff, but this is all name brand. Yeah, I must have drums, shoes, wheel cylinders are in there. Boy, I spent some money. Um, and then I got a call my radiator showed up. So at this point, we're on the boys over at uh, Auto Parts Center. They're always hooking me up, giving me a deal. So I got the rad, and they gave me a bunch of other stuff. Well, when I say give, I mean I gave them my visa in exchange for goods. But uh, this rad, I think I ran it in convertible. I know Josh ran it 55. It's a good unit. So that's sweet. Canadian made. And then a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. I'm going to use this push lock for the trans cooler. A few fittings. Uh, old school. The rest that's in there for the alternator on the uh, driver. So I think I'm going to run. I got a brand new uh, forest world alternator. Standard hunter amp jobby. Not bad. Some header bolts. They gave me some pulleys to test. This is all fancy stuff. I can't afford this. But I have the pulley, the same one. This one's all knackered up and bent. And then I think I have this as a stock job. I got both of these, so if we can make something like that work. I'm thinking these two will work well together. That would have been the best. That came with the 57, 150 when I got it, but it's all bent to hell. So if I can do this, I can return that uh, fancy one, because that's, that's like a mock-up unit. And exhaust. We got that last night. Hasn't thawed off really. Well, not bad. It isn't cold here. So we're gonna make a bit of a pile of parts. So stand the hood up, maybe at the back, or put it outside or do something. We don't need it right now. I think what I'm gonna do is pull off this whole fender, fender inner fender, the whole deal, and then we'll put on the one. I'd like to put on the header with the pipe, the whole thing all together. I'm gonna take a picture, see what it looks like. Make sure it even fits. I might have to move some of these brake lines on. I look at this. I can just disconnect them. I think they're all loose. Anyways, it might be a little bit of rerouting. If I can get that on there, then I can uh, decide how much I gotta yard out of this thing on both sides, but I can't see it being too bad. It's just fender wall headers on a Tri-5 Chevy, super common. And if we do that, I might put a floor jack or something like that under the exhaust to hold it up. Otherwise, I guess I'm taking it off the collectors. Be a bit of a pain, easier to manage, but uh, then I gotta take it all apart, put it back together, screw around. I know I don't have, by looks of it, these were just saws all off. Man, I put these on in a freaking hurry. This thing was originally <laughs> nothing. I welded these on. God, did I do some terrible work. But in my defense, I was after like a week of being up straight. Just so we had some tailpipes because they were dumping out under the car and I put them out. They don't match side to side. They're, these are, they're rough. But they were uh, next to free and I can borrow them. And really, I just want the headers. The rest of the exhaust, I can build or do whatever. Side pipes are super easy on tri-fives. They run straight outside. You can dump in front of the rear wheels and 
problem solved. I know it's not for everyone. It's my car right now. When you guys send me an offer, I'll put the ram horns back on, make you a custom exhaust. How about that? Fair deal. I'll get the fender off. We'll get this uh, hooked up. Hopefully everything fits nice. Then we can go from there. If I can get the exhaust on and it goes easy, then we can move right to radiator, front dress, all that sort of stuff. But that might be... I feel like that'll be a couple of videos because there ain't no way these headers are going out without fighting me. Okay, so this header fits phenomenal. Now, I did take the pipe off. Actually, the other one I might be able to get in. This one just had to kind of angle up and down all, and there's so much weight on it, I couldn't uh, finagle it. I put the floor jack on it, but you know what, three bolts. And uh, I'm pretty sure those collector gaskets probably have miles of mayhem and then like three cruises on them before Josh took them apart. So they fit perfect. They just barely clear i mean this i can adjust they clear the <clears throat> the tire no problem obviously i'll have to do some trimming to the inner wheel tub by the looks of it i'll actually have to start kind of i'm thinking i might just kind of trace this up and go into that line and then over and then uh however much will fit down in the back here but uh really not too bad actually i don't think i have to like it's, it goes here so it'll just be that one little section I'll have to cut out. Yeah, it's, that's perfect. Oh, it's close. Yeah. We'll take it on uh, 50 times. That's what we do. But before I go any further, you know what I want to do? Take this header off. I'm going to paint the steering box black just with some brush paint. I'm going to fill it full of grease. Because once this is together, there ain't no way that right there where my finger is, that's how you fill it full of oil. They're supposed to be full of oil, but they all leak. The gaskets are all wore out all the time. The seals... So you put like hypoid in them, but uh, I'm just going to pack it full of grease. I think I have grease. I can see from here my grease gun is empty, so hopefully I got some stuff to put in there. And uh, paint it black and we're done. I'll we'll start jamming. Uh, steering box is black. Unfortunately, I don't have any grease, so I got to run out and get some. But I thought I'd jump ahead onto this side because I know what I need. So obviously I need exhaust hangers, I need grease. Hopefully that's all I need. Um, there actually ended up being quite a bit of chopping required. I originally just had a kind of a hole that went up and over, but these headers do go quite high, which, catch 22, you're mangling up the inner fender, but it gets the tire, or it gets the header, further away from the tire. Obviously, the higher everything is, if it's lower, it becomes kind of close. On my 55 of the big block, we had serious issues. This has got loads and loads of room. Um, you can see here, actually, I had to go all the way in here. That's going to show the camera. This is actually the inner fender. It's, it's actually rocked up against the uh, tube. So I still trim it over a little bit. And I mean, I didn't... It's not like there's a whole lot of wasted space. The only thing is right here, I could have gone there and up, I guess. So this little section right there might have been a little extra. But I'm going to slice and dice that. I'm then going to uh, dress the edge, repaint just the edge a little bit. I'm going to undercoat the in inside of the fender because I think I have some. Yep, got some. And I'm going to pick up some of that while I'm out as well. So then this fender will be sealed on the inside and done. It can be bolted on that we can kind of carry on. So from this angle, it doesn't look that bad. You know, I know everyone's going to say paint the headers, paint the headers. He's already been painted white. I'm pretty sure they were painted white. Now Josh on his car, we clean them up real nice, paint them white, one of Miles of Mayhem, They're, these, they just look like crap. You can get them uh, hot coated, the guy here who does it does black and grey, not white, I'm not doing either of those colours, I'd rather have it rusty than uh, not white headers, because white fender wheel headers are all you can ever put on a car, if you do anything different, you're wrong, sorry, you're outvoted. So, truck's running, do this real quick, get a few things come back we'll start jamming on the other side but honestly it's not that bad now i know where to cut i'll cut just on the other side of the dropout on this one here or on the other side sorry i, I continued there so i'll just kind of do a an angle up like that and it'll be fine assuming both headers are the same that's the other thing i guess never accounted for but i'll be back shortly i'm drawing uh drawing on enough there we're getting there both headers are on i uh, Packed the box full of grease, so that's good. And I think they only had these style, uh, kind of universal straps. Aren't the greatest. I also, I don't know what size it was. It's clearly three inch now that I see it. 
so I didn't buy any clamps or supplies to tack weld it on less in this general area I might have some three inch clamps but anyways so we got that dialed the one fender fits I want to get the other one uh, fitting the inner fender so I'm gonna blindly cut try it 18 times until it does fit then we'll hose that down with undercoating then while that dries, we'll go eat supper, but before we go and eat supper, we'll obviously fire this thing up with open headers, because... Well, I know that's why you guys are here. I mean, if you're, if you're watching this channel, it's because you're sick in the head like me, and you need to hear a small block Chevy run with open headers, even though yesterday, or last video, we just heard it run with open manifolds, but open headers is way better. Then we'll hear it with the actual exhaust. So, it'll be like, good, best, and we'll finish it better. Start cutting. We got it all dialed together. Uh, inner fenders are all painted. This one, I pretty much nailed it first time. I don't mean to toot my own horn there, but you just cut way too much out and it fits perfect. Cleaned it up with the flap wheel, undercoated it, put a little gas in the carpet. Oh. Nope. Oh, yeah. Battery helps. All right. I'm thinking this thing is going to sound pretty good now. Before that, just Manifold just blah blah blah. Headers, it's the wind. Uh. Oh, yeah. Yep, sounds good. Clearly got a bit of a cam in it. Clearly not tuned. And clearly a bunch of things fell off everywhere. I guess we did a little safety check first. But uh, it's mint. Okay, a little paint dry. Let air out a little bit in here because it smells like gas and paint fumes, which both give me headaches. Have a little supper, come back out, and then we'll put tailpipes on. See what it sounds like then. So it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> the way this exhaust was. I put these on exaggerated out just to try and get the fumes away from the car when we were driving because it was uh man that that 55 chevy was a few, few holes in it had no glass and no side glass fiberglass doors uh yeah i don't remember the the trunk was oh yeah big hole in the trunk actually because he had four linked it so cut the floor out so everything would fit so i wanted to get the exhaust as far away from the car as possible so, so i i did that that's my handiwork uh well it ain't too pretty the other thing is on this setup is it hangs down quite low so i mean that can all be taken out of this we can just cut that out and bring the whole thing up it'll bring it forward slightly but not too big of a deal anyways that's it's so freaking cold today i don't even want to lie on the ground so i put some bailing wire on it to hold it uh it'll flail in the wind but you know what i think we're just going to put these on for now also these this one gasket was pretty mangled but we'll just put it together to hear it run and then we'll uh we'll waste the rest of the night putting a few things together putting a few things together uh i put this pulley on it seems like it'll be okay this one i had it's good except i believe the the harmonic balancer is going to be fine thread which i don't think i have any fine thread uh bolts i ain't so fine here but if we can get that together where I think it'll work, and I believe it will. I just put these up and, I mean, the belt's gonna line up no problem. So we get that together with the alternator, hang that, and maybe just put the radiator in or something. Uh, maybe not, because this is so flimsy for right now until we get the fenders on. I think that's probably where we'll end it. And then, yeah, we'll do that, we'll run it, we'll do that. And then starting tomorrow, I think I shut the drive shaft tomorrow. So we get drive shaft, pull out the transmission, do all that sort of stuff, maybe do the rear brakes, and oh, this front brake, I hooked it back up. This one's not too bad, I think it'll be okay. 
I'm thinking I might be further ahead to undo it, put it out, on and around and up that way. So it is above the control arm, but it's not like it's going to travel that much. Probably be fine. This one here is just a little bit too short, so I'll have to make... Plus, it's, uh, you don't have a lot of room there. This whole thing is pretty close to that. That hits. Now it's all tightened up. I'll have to loosen that and kind of bend everything the other way. Make a new line. I don't know how much airspace you want around a hot exhaust to a brake line. I mean, you don't want it to boil, but... Is it inch enough airspace? I assume that would probably be fine, right? That's all you're really trying to accomplish anywhere else. So, a couple steps forward, a couple steps back. But we are making some progress. So I'll get the other exhaust hung up real quick. It's just three bolts and some bailing wire. Anybody can do that. Then we'll get the camera set up. We'll set the alternator. And we'll see if all that stuff's going to work, actually, on the alternator. I hope it will. I don't even know. It might be all junk. i got to build different brackets and whatnot. So we get this haphazardly together. Then I could measure for a belt. Then tomorrow, figure out belt size, rad hoses, and then I mean, all I'd have to do is just bridge these two together for right now, instead of running it through the heater core. And we can fill up with water. And if we get this dialed, then it can spin. Wow. All right, I'm gonna get to work instead of talking. Key, got a bunch of stuff going on. Um, we got a crank pulley on, we got this water pump one. I ended up using just the factory one. When I kind of put it on, it's slightly back. It needs just like a washer on the back side to pull it ahead. So that's no big deal. Be good enough for measuring anyways. Uh, exhaust is done. This header here, I can see when I put it in, oh, I have a little piece of the gasket kind of came right out. So that's going to clickety-clack. Now what we got to do is put on this piece. It's been a while since I've done a driver's side alternator bracket. It worked. I typically hate it because the belt, oh, this is quite a zip tie. The belt, because the alternator's up here, because it has quite a long whip to it. Uh, I believe it goes farther side away. So it's going to fit something like that. And this goes on like that. And this has some adjustment forward and back to get it true for the belt. So we'll do that. Then the alternator fits on there, the bottom. And we got this giant banana arm, which will fit to, actually it might go to this right here. So, I'll get this kind of fit. It just bolts on to where the exhaust is. Hopefully these header bolts I got will be long enough. They make two sizes. They make, well, I guess they make more than two, but they got uh, kind of standard-ish sizes. These are three quarter inch long. And I feel like I'm gonna need some, yeah, one inch long ones. Well, it'll be close. We good enough for mock-up anyways. So we'll get this kind of together. We'll see how it turns out. Standard GM alternator, uh, one wire jobby. So, <clears throat> uh, of course, it's going to need washers. Well, whatever. So, we get that started. So, that actually, you know what I gotta say? This bracket has a pile of slop. Adjustment wise, I should say not slop adjustment for and back fore and aft and then I'll need to make some sort of a Thing for the alternator as well. So you can really put I mean all the way forward or all the way back Now where the heck is this gonna go? So this is your obviously that's what kind of holds it and this is your adjuster I'll Let me put that in Let's See if we can get that loose real quick so I kind of feel like we just put the adjuster on and start wheeling it around and it'll tell us where it wants to be. Maybe. Just a small block Chevy and this is a pretty common dealio. So we'll do this and then I'll just uh, 
or like a shoelace or a piece of wire or something like that around and get kind of a ballpark measurement but you know honestly I think if I find something just had this setup this is basically a factory setup something like a you know what it would be maybe even a tri five. okay that wants to go absolutely nowhere so what am I going to do with this uh, oh we've lined up yeah close so now this bracket here is right there would be actually all right if I put a sleeve on it or put this on the back side maybe I'm just thinking out loud with you guys it's kind of irrelevant if it's perfectly straight I'll probably just go buy a couple of belts and then uh, return the ones I don't use and buy a spare of the one I do use. Okay, so that's good. Uh, actually, that one water pump bolt will work if we do that. Let's just cheat this. I don't think you need. Oh, well, you can't use a water pump bolt. You guys can tell me why in the comments. But in the meantime. I should loosen it first. Try this. Oh, that needs to be ground down a little. So that's kind of the idea. And this will be. Well, there really is not much adjustment if we do it there. Well, <clears throat> that gives it half the swing in this. How much adjustment does a guy need? Okay, we'll call it there. I think what I'm going to do is we'll tighten it up as small as it will go. Now bear in mind, this is all just super loose. Um, it could come out a little. That's going to be something, adjusting that, I guess, but I guess once the belt's on, you'll be able to tell. That's probably what it is. You get a belt the right length, and this can kind of do its own thing. And then that's, well, that's about half as much adjustment. I'd like a little more than that, I'm not going to lie. Eh, I think it'll be good enough for now. We'll be able to get a belt on it. That's two inches of... Right. If we get in the one you got a kind of screwdriver on to start with, I think we'll be golden. So we'll grab a piece of wire real quick. We'll measure it up. Uh, here's what we're going to use, I don't know, it's like ATD or something to get wire. That should be a good idea to kind of give us a bit of a reference. So, when you do this, you want to use like twine or something that's got uh, not much give. Because if you use something with like yarn or whatever, obviously it's not the greatest. So, kind of tighten her up best you can. So, about there. So now that, where my thumb is, is the length of the belt. Measure that with a tape, and then we'll cross-reference that to a V-belt. <laughs> well, I got her all measured up. Such as it is, today's video where, uh, I don't know if we made a whole lot of steps forward. I sure spent a bunch of money. So if you wouldn't mind liking the video, I'd really appreciate that, because today was a pricey one. But I think we're all dialing up my list to, for tomorrow. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Should be able to have it running off the tank tomorrow if I get fuel. The radiator's the only hiccup. It, I mean, I know it'll bolt in, no problem. And then we'll hook up the transmission, all that sort of stuff. And then coolant lines is the only thing. Oh, actually, this is the wrong water neck. Try 5 Chevys go bloop. I'll have to get one of those, a straight one. I don't know if I got one. Keep using them. So I gotta get that. And then, I think, I mean, I got my list, miscellaneous nuts and bolts, a belt, coolant, some some plugs to plug off some miscellaneous, uh, like this is obviously for like a temperature sender, which we're not going to use right now, like little things like that, just kind of temporary plug it all off. 
another set of header gaskets or a header gasket and a pile of high temperature silicone yeah okay and then oh transmission we got hooked that up so we got my bracket but i mean it shouldn't be too big of a deal the kick down is right there it has a little ball right on it everything is just kind of fitting into place i think this setup should work be a little screwing around kind of back and forth uh i think what we're gonna do we're gonna fire it up because we have to hear about the exhaust right everybody needs to hear that then i'll take uh, these front pulleys off i'll paint them so they're ready to go on tomorrow yeah i think that's it i mean i'll do it all tomorrow i'm getting kind of tired it's getting kind of late but uh yeah look how cool this thing looks everything just looks so nice and shiny and then blah, i love it <laughs> it's so ridiculous all right let's wake the neighbors up at 11 o'clock at night on a monday it's gonna be so much easier tomorrow when i don't have to keep filling the carburetor with gas every time and stuff like that this is the car part of the uh header gasket that fell right out i found it so uh yeah let's see what this thing sounds like as I remember. Ah, <sighs> this thing's gonna be something else. That's where we're leaving it for now. I'm sure you heard that clicking. I gotta get that taken care of because I'll drive me nuts. So, header gaskets tomorrow. Maybe hang these up a little bit better, do something like that. But this thing sounds pretty good if I don't say so myself. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Leave a comment, all those sort of things. And uh, should be a good one on the next one.